Hey everyone, welcome back to another dividend investing video. Today I wanted to make a quick video addressing some of the questions we've been getting down in our comments section. We get a bunch of excellent questions from people in the dividend investing community and I wanted to take an opportunity to give some more thoughtful replies to some of them. We have a great community of dividend investors, 21,000 plus strong and growing. So let's get to your question. I'm Nick and this is the Dividend Growth Income Channel. Thank you for joining me today. I'm not a financial advisor or guru. I'm just a regular guy who wants to share my love of dividend growth investing and building financial independence with passive income. If you could, please do me a favor, smash the like button and subscribe to keep up with future videos. This helps us out more than you can imagine with the algorithm so we can bring you more quality dividend investing content. Okay, so let's get into your questions. And I apologize in advance if I butcher any names here. So our first comment is from user GM Nod. What is the most important data you look at when choosing a stock? And where do you get the information? Wonderful question. So I'm going to address the second part of that first. I have memberships on a couple wonderful resource websites that provide a lot of the useful information we look at. Mostly SeekingAlpha.com and SimplySafeDividends.com. And I love this stuff, so I spend my spare time reading articles on Seeking Alpha. And on that site, I can follow a watch list of stocks that I'm interested in, where I'll get the latest news, as well as access to the last you know, 10 years of financial data, analyst ratings, earnings reports, financials, etc. It's a great resource, and you can actually use the link in my description to sign up for this one. And that would give you the best deal they have available. Now, you don't need to get the premium, though, to see a lot of the helpful information they make available. So, But to access the articles, I do believe you need that the premium service. Then, simplysafedividends.com is definitely a premium service if you check that out. But they have a wonderful stock screener, provide everything in such a nice, easy-to-understand format that I can pass along here to you guys in our videos to illustrate things such as dividend growth and such. Now, in addition to these sites, I definitely spend a lot of time on financial Twitter or X reading and engaging with other investors. There's a lot of knowledge out there, most of it absolutely free. And you can find me there at Div Growth Income. I love to engage with you guys. So to your first part of your question, is for what I'm looking for when I'm choosing a stock, I think there are several things you want to consider. First, do I understand the company's business model? Where is the company positioned relative to its peers? Do they have any kind of a moat? Hopefully they do. Second, do they have growing revenue? Hopefully so. Third, do they carry a lot of debt? Hopefully not. Fourth, do they have growing free cash flow? This is one of the most important considerations for dividend growth investors. And as for the dividend, I certainly have learned dividend growth is far more important than current yield for the long term. Sixth, we want to see a sustainable payout ratio. And I could look at Simply Safe Dividend's safety score as another guide for the overall health of their dividend. Other nice things we like to see are high return on invested capital, you know, the nice bonus is a reduction in outstanding shares out, outstanding over time. And of course, we consider a valuation. But as Warren Buffett says, it's better to pay a fair price for a great business than a great price for a fair business. But as a dividend investor, if I can lock in a yield that's better than the five-year average and a PE that is lower than the five-year average, if at all possible, that's really nice. Now, perhaps the most important question you should be asking yourself, though, is, in 10 years, where do you see this company? Is this something you'd be glad you've owned for the next 10 years? And this is the real challenge I think we face as investors, that unknown, since past performance can't really be relied on for future results. Okay, the next question is from Julian Riviera3892. Should I have a traditional or Roth IRA? I don't know which one for dividend investing. So Julian, I don't really think there's a right or wrong answer to this. It's more about what's best for your own situation the most important consideration is how do you see your future tax situation? Do you want to save on the taxes now? Then you'll go the traditional IRA route. If you want to pay taxes now and then be able to take withdrawals on all of your gains, dividends completely tax-free, you go with the Roth IRA. As for me, I'm doing the Roth for that reason. I went with the traditional IRA route when I was a little younger in the past, but going forward I've chosen the Roth because I want to pay less taxes in the future, not more. So do you want the savings now or in retirement is the question that you need to ask yourself. It's sort of a delayed gratification question. And I think the benefit for most of us is going to be to use that Roth. But I think using either and maxing it out is really going to put you in a potentially great situation for the future. So it's really either or. And while there are income limits on the Roth, there's ways around that with a backdoor conversion. So Roths are a little bit more flexible, but with withdrawals as well. 
you're able to withdraw your contributions without penalties generally, though I don't recommend this. Thank you for the question, Julian. So the next question comes from Whipless. His comments are always putting a smile on my face. Thank you, Whipless, for always leaving your wonderful comments. He says, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Pine. That's the ticker for Alpine Income Realty Trust. This is a real estate investment trust. So let's take a minute to look at Pine for Whipless. This is an interesting company. It's a new company. It's only about five years old. There's a ton of articles calling it a buy on seeking alpha. So it's developing what looks to be a pretty devoted following in a short period of time. They have 138 properties across 35 states, mostly concentrated on the eastern half of the U.S., as well as the Midwest and some of the urban West Coast. The company is looking to grow into another Realty Income or NNN Reed or WP Carey, Agri Realty. This is kind of like their baby brother. And actually, their strategy seems to be more like Agri Realties, where they're focused on acquiring a blue chip tenant base with 64% of their tenant revenue in investment grade quality tenants. Well, Agri Realties is at 69%. Now, because it's such a young company and a small company, at only a $219 million market cap, that's a real potential for future growth. So in that respect, I do like it. But with that, it obviously carries more risk. Simply Safe Dividends rates their dividend with a safety score of 50, borderline safe. It definitely doesn't have the stability or track record of its larger peers. This is a stock for investors who want income today. So I'd imagine it's right up your alley, whipless. Shares are yielding 6.86%, which is 19% above the five-year average. Payout ratio looks fine to me. So I think it's an intriguing investment with shares down 20% over the last year. Could be the time. Probably not for me in my own situation because it's really not offering much in the way of dividend growth right now, but looks like a decent pick for income. And if they manage to grow this, it could be a lot of money to be made. So definitely one to put on your watch list. That's ticker P-I-N-E. And thank you for bringing this to our attention. Whipless. More comments here. The next question I got off Twitter from our longtime engager, journeyman underscore 15. You give this guy a follow if you're our next. He posts great investing content. Now he wants to know what's the favorite in my portfolio. So out of all the stocks in my YouTube portfolio that I share on the channel, my favorite is easily Broadcom. It's because it's been my best performer. Look, I'm up about 80% on my investment. I just wish I'd bought more back when I was buying it. It's also been one of my strongest dividend growth stocks. Right? Well, out of all the stocks I own, however, if I had to pick one to own, the only stock that I could own, just one, it would be Microsoft, ticker MSFT. Been holding on to my shares for a while. I'm up well over 100% on those. They've been running almost the perfect business. And if I could only own that one stock, that would be it. And that's just my opinion. And then we have a very thoughtful question from Whisk68. He starts with an observation. 90 seconds and an SCHD mention. No longer interested. No offense, but this is the most tired strategy, man. In 90 years, your 3% return will let you retire safely. F that, dude. I'm trying to retire next week. How do I do that shit with no money to start? Well, you do that shit with a lottery ticket and a lot of luck, my dude. I don't even know where to begin. Because look, this channel is not about getting rich quick. The reality is it takes money to make money. And the earlier you get it working for you, the more you can get it working for you, the better. And nobody is investing in SCHD for that 3% dividend. In fact, shares of SCHD have produced an average annualized return of 13% since its inception. So pay attention. <laughs> All right, next question comes from Jeff Aragon. He says, I always see videos about the number one stock like Procter & Gamble or Costco, the big players, but no one ever brings up the companies in the second or third place with great balance sheets and fundamentals. The companies that are doing great, but don't get the recognition because of the bigger game names. You know what I mean? I hear you on that, Jeff. It does seem like we tend to focus on a lot of the same stocks sometimes, and we want to be investing in the best of the best companies out there in my opinion i do my best to cover a wide array of stocks across all of the different sectors and i'll tell you what when i do come across something under the radar i'll definitely try to do a better job of bringing this to your guys attention so jeff i'll try to do better with that and i do appreciate the comment all right and then me 12180 says do one on aap so he's asking about advanced auto parts let's take a quick look on simply safe dividends Advanced Auto Parts, this is a retailer for automotive replacement parts, accessories, batteries, and maintenance items. This is a $3.62 billion market cap company with stores in the U.S. and Canada, and they also own the CarQuest brand stores in Mexico. 
Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm not at all interested in this one, which is why I've never talked about it before. But since you asked, this is a stock that suffered a dividend cut back in 2023 by 83%. They slashed that dividend. And 2023 saw a massive drop in their profits. And taking a look at things, it's just all trending in the wrong direction. It's not something I'd be investing in. Massive drop in earnings per share, free cash flow per share. Revenue has been growing, but this alone is not enough because we see some more troubling numbers below. Return on equity, return on invested capital, all going in the wrong direction over the last decade. The operating margin has dropped to 3%. Free cash flow margin is at 0%. So even though they brought in record revenue in 2023, they've become seriously less profitable over the last year. Without reading into it more, my first guess is just rising costs eating into profits with inflation. And then their debt has been growing over the last few years as well, heading in the wrong direction. So it's not for me. The dividend of 1.63% is in line with their five-year average, so maybe it's reasonably valued. Shares have dropped about 60% over the last year, so could this be a value play that makes some quick cash? Like maybe they turn this around. I don't follow it super close. But I don't see anything encouraging in any of this financial data. The average analyst price target is 57.05, representing nearly 7% downside from where shares are today. So I'd want to see improvement in their margins before making an investment. But I think there are far better opportunities for dividend-minded investors for 2024. But thanks for the question, MeTube. It's a cool name, MeTube. And then we had the godfather wanted to know about Pfizer, ticker PFE, and could 2024 be the year of their comeback? This is a great question because Pfizer had a terrible 2023. Shares are down 40% from where they were a year ago today. This is a stock a ton of investors hold, often primarily for that dividend. And look, you can get shares today at near 6% yield. Almost unheard of for Pfizer, so somewhat concerning. But they did recently announce a 2.5% dividend hike. And I do think the dividend is reasonably safe for this foreseeable future. And I do think things would turn around for Pfizer. Now, is 2024 the year that's going to happen? Uh, probably not. These drug companies are always dealing with expiring patents and their upcoming drug pipelines. Things could get a little cyclical. Pfizer still having trouble coming back from the drop in sales from that COVID vaccine, right? I think if you are cool holding the stock for a while, things are going to turn around in time, but they've really struggled coming back from that vaccine. Could be a bumpy couple years for this one. So we will keep an eye on it. Getting that 6% starting yield in a company like Pfizer, like so that is a very rare opportunity. Can't deny that. Okay, and then Yvonne6582 asks, starting a new portfolio or top five dividend companies per sector. Now, sometimes I get questions that warrant their own video. This is definitely one of those. So just the other day, I put out a video on how I would start a portfolio from scratch. If I was starting over today, Knowing what I know now, and I show you the 10 stock portfolio I would build, I'll leave it pretty flexible on how it could be constructed. So go ahead, click into this next video to check that one out. Thanks so much for sticking around. And until next time, my friends, keep investing.